Welcome to Tech Fever Play Everything's Weekly Tech Podcast, where we talk about the tech news of the week from everything from home theater, smart home to AI and robots and everything in between. Every episode, we'll give you our favorite tech picks of the week, the best tech steals of the week. And if you want a qu- question read on air, you can send it into techfeverpodcast at gmail.com. I'm your host, Mike Doherty, and alongside me, as always, is the beautiful Kevin Coelho. Send them while we're still not popular, and we'll answer them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trust you me. You, mean, send them now. It will it will be read on air right now. Once we, yeah, once we get big, fuck you. We're, <laughs> we're picking and choosing then. Now, we'll answer any of them. Uh, literally anything, please. <laughs> well, it's better, 100 watt or 60 watt? LED equivalent is better, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's going to save you energy. I know what you mean, Big Kev. How much energy is that going to save? Uh, I mean, uh, dude, so I just bought... <laughs> I just bought, um, I have, uh, you know, my backyard. I added lights to it. Yeah. You're getting real fancy. Right. <laughs> and uh, those had incandescent style 10 watt bulbs and I replaced it with a one watt bulb. So it saved me 10 times less energy. That's pretty exciting. Uh, that is exciting. I don't know what, you know what I mean? is more exciting right now. You know, everybody should it- get excited about it. Real making a good point, Tombo. <laughs> <laughs> and Tombo, uh, Tombo on the board as always for this show. Yo, yo, yo. Um, Kevin. I mean, just... not as always because the last show he wasn't on. You know what I mean? Yeah, generally, you know what? I was on vacations, all right? It's true. Uh, we just spent 10 minutes talking about lemons before the show, so you know it's going to be a good episode. Uh, Kevin. Tombo, I sent you another picture <laughs> of more lemons. Up. Yep. Really That's just though. for you. You don't have to share that. It's so I. It's better in a bowl. I don't understand. I don't trust genetically modified lemons. They're not modified, man. That science said it's best. Look you how know, shiny farming they are and round. You know. Yeah, it's Meyer lemons, man. That's what they're for. GMO. <laughs> they're non-GMO. Fifty-four dollars for a pack of lemons. A five-pound I, I bag. I'm telling you, your, your family t- uh, um, cheeks never had Meyer lemons. Why? I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I've ever eaten a Meyer lemon. Not to brag, but that's my last name, Meyer. It's on my door. It's on my door. <laughs> so inside <laughs> baseball. <laughs> Time of changing your name in my in my phone to Meyer. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, Kevin, have you been playing with any new tech uh, for this week? Other than uh, your, yes. your energy saving yes, light I- bulbs. Yes, I have. I've been playing with my new Pixel. 4A. Ooh. Is it the tiniest phone I've ever owned? Here is my Pixel 3 XL. Do we see how much bigger this is? It's, it's a damn shame. All right, isn't that a huge difference? But I got to tell you, very comfortable with my phone in my hand. I don't feel like I'm going to drop it like I do with with uh, my the XL, which, let's I, be honest, that maybe that's why it's so broken. Because <laughs> I got little hands. Maybe this is what I was meant to be holding. No, little phones are so bad, man. I, I mean, so far, I, I mean, it's only been a day, but it's very comfortable. It did. It is unfortunate that it doesn't have uh, what is it called wireless charging. Yeah, because a uh, big fan of that wireless charging. So going back to plugging it in, I guess that does suck that they wouldn't add that. I feel like that's such a simple feature to add. But what do I know? I'm not an engineer, you know. That's true. You are not an engineer. Bam. Well aware. Fact check. Uh, is there anything like revolutionary about like that phone that you really like, other than the price point and what you get? I mean, here's the thing. My last phone was the three XL, and then I went and I took a picture with this phone. Oh, it looked really good. It was it like portrait I'm seeing, mode? What was it in portrait mode? Of course, it was in portrait mode. Don't be a fucking idiot. <laughs> I only tell you tell you the same thing. I always take them in portrait mode. Yeah, we know, Kevin. Uh, everyone on your Instagram sees all your portrait mode photos. The, I hate you the, so all much. All three of them. Oh, now you give me shit for not using my social media? <laughs> no, it's not even that. All three of your portrait mode photos. Really, okay. every picture you've taken. You're upsetting everyone involved right now, right? <laughs> so you can stop. Thank you. Um... Yeah, no, I mean, like, the camera seems like it's it's another leap forward. And, like, the, you know, that's what I had heard, that the 4A, no, the 4, the Pixel 4 had a really, really beautiful camera, and it was, like, the next, like, you know, iteration of Pixel's cameras. Um, and the, the, the good thing was the 4A 
came with that same camera. I think the 3A took a drop where it wasn't the same camera, but it was using the same software. Yeah. But I believe 4A is using the same camera. And got to say, loving it so far. Now, you, you said this is not going to be your final phone for the year. Is that still uh, the case? I mean, it's small. Well, here's the thing. Okay, no worries. Uh, the rumor is that the um, next year, the rumor is we're going to get a Pixel 6 and possibly a Pixel Fold. Now, I don't necessarily believe it, but if that rumor starts looking truer, I don't know. I think I, I think that I could hang on to this phone for like a year. Look, hear me out. How can I get I'm you listening. on board with the Fold 2? No. It would be fun. We could both have it. You know what I no, mean? Dude, we could be little fold I, I buddies. I don't want to deal with like the fucking bullshit blow programs. There's no you know bullshit. I mean? You just make a folder and you send it off. You take it off your home screen and you're good to go. What? Uh, you, you, and then you can assign the Bixby button to be something else. You know? As you, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. There's one extra step. That's just yeah, like, but I once you set it up, you're good. Kevin, look at that phone and tell me that's not the sexiest phone you've ever seen. 100% sexiest phone. Is it worth 2000 plus dollars yes, maybe? Yes. I don't know. And I think I, I don't can, know. Come on. I don't know, man. Do the do the plunge with me. I think it would be exciting. I but I just did this and look how look how happy I am with my little baby phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you just small. said you wanted to upgrade because it's too tidy of a f- screen. Yeah, but like here's the thing. If it, Pixel makes a fold, I'm in. <laughs> also, hear me out. The thing that we really liked about the Sony phone, you know, the the ultra wide aspect ratio? No. Yeah, yeah, no, we've talked about it before. Uh, no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Anyway, you, you get that ultra wide on that Samsung. You know what I mean? On the full two, you get the ultra wide screen aspect ratio, and it fits I mean, in your hand when you're using it. I in love, the f- in the, the thing I lower. loved about the the Xperia One, that's what it was called, right? The Xperia yeah. One mm-hmm. was that like how absurdly long it felt. I don't think you're gonna get that with the fold. Oh yeah, no, it's super long. Have you seen pictures? It's like super like I'm I'm so happy with this guy. Look how happy I am. No. Come on. I mean, we I know I know I'm gonna get you to crack by the end of the year. I think means you're gonna see mine and you're gonna be like, oh, this is fucking really cool. And I know I'm you would take for sure. I know for sure I'll play with yours. Yeah, you can play with mine anytime. Um I know you're gonna get there and you're gonna be like, oh man, I really like have you, I, I, have you heard I, the this other is really cool? That... And then you're gonna be like, "Oh, I, I want to get one because I want you know I know you with tech. You want to be on the bleeding edge, and this is something you're gonna want to be on the bleeding edge of. God, damn. I want to be on the bleeding edge of flagship Google phones. You know what I mean? And going Samsung. That's what. What are we doing? Oh, he's showing you, dude. Oh, look, look at the phone. look Hold at on. it in tablet mode. I just don't think. I don't. I don't know, man. It's be- I mean, it certainly is beautiful. That's the old one. That's is it? One? Yeah, that's the old one. The, the one that. Oh, also the, the, the laser cut one. thing it, on it's the. A, it's a single circle. Right. That I think that's some bullshit. You see that? One see that right there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it a lot. I don't understand why they didn't do this earlier. This seems like a very, very nice solution. Way better solution. Way better solution. Look how pretty it looks. Yeah, I mean, it's just a little hole it. punch. I mean, it's a little yeah. annoying, but you know. What? No, this is way less annoying than the notch. I, I don't mind the notch, but I look, I'll get on board with anything. I don't really Here's care. Here's the thing. It's not about like, uh, like I understand with you being like, I don't mind the notch. I didn't mind the notch. But like, if you could have less of a footprint, wouldn't you take it? Yeah. Because that's what they're offering here. Or it's just like, sure, the notch is not that bad, but this is smaller. So therefore it's better. Yeah, sure. I mean, some technology great works. Point. The smaller, He's making the some great points. But uh yeah and especially in the tablet mode with the little hole punch too man it's just so sexy man i it's really hard to pass up it's interesting that they put that there like i don't i don't know how many times like i feel like they could have gotten away of not having a camera there do they have a camera on the front of the phone yeah you know the, on the it thin on, front they have it on the front and then they have it in the tablet and then they have it on the back oh three phones yeah it's legit three cameras or more oh, yeah, cameras yeah, because the back cameras. has three cameras but yeah legit i'm excited uh, Ugh, I know I'm. I, I can't tell you how excited I am to not have my phone constantly disconnecting Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, are you still re- encountering that issue right now? I mean, with the three XL, I was literally today. Like, I was. I don't. Anytime I open the Nest Home app, or yeah, the ne- the Nest app, it crashes my Bluetooth, and so like I'll go in there to turn my like security system off, and yeah. then it'll just crash, and then I have to pull down, turn the Wi-Fi settings off, 
then hold down the Wi-Fi button, go into the scanning functions of the Wi-Fi, turn the Bluetooth scanning on, and then off again. And then it'll stop alerting me that the Bluetooth's not working. Yeah, Doesn't that good. sound fun? Yeah, that's, that's no good. That's good phone. Yeah, and it disables my Bluetooth. Once I do that, I have to then restart my phone up to like, I think I've done like six times. It's like, okay, restart, it'll turn on, and it's like, nope, there's the Bluetooth warning again. Restart, restart, restart. It's just, ah, oh, it's so frustrating. Look, man, uh, Google's still trying to figure some shit out, all right? So in the meanwhile, while they perfect the shit, might as well just get something that's been perfected, you know what I mean? I don't know, man. I, I'm real happy with this phone right now. It's day one. We'll see where I am in, in yeah, a week. We'll see where you are at in a in a month or two when it's all shattered and you can drop in it. Uh, I guess I guess oh, the, I got I, I guess the full two is not a good choice because you're just gonna break the shit out of it. Right, right, exactly. I did get the case. Went up with the basically black case, and which is more protected? of a gray. I also don't like Google's naming on their colors. Yeah, and they piss like, me why are you off. Trying to be fucking like, cute. You know what I mean? Like, is this basically black or is it Heather Gray? Yeah, it's Heather it's, it's Gray. It's just Heather Gray. You freaking, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's, it's Heather Gray, and that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> uh, Kevin, you ready to talk some tech? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am now. Uh, well, speaking of foldable phones, uh, have you seen this Microsoft Surface Duo? Now, here's my question to you. Is this a foldable? F- I mean, I guess this phone. It, it's a two no, display it's- phone. So, uh, Tom, by the way, if you want to try to pull that up. Um, I think if you click on the link, it will take you right there. But it's basically what like LG is doing, where it's two phones basically that fold together. So well, dude, LG I did don't like a it. Phone, and then you buy a case that has another screen on it. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. This is that is connected forever. You yeah. can't. There's no separating. I that. don't like it. Tumbo, you want to get rid of that top screens or that top? Hit Control Shift B. <laughs> What? Hide know. your bookmarks. We don't need to know, you know what you're me? like. What you're looking up? Yeah, why not? You know what I gotta hide. Uh, no, I. So this. Wait, co- this hey, um, uh, Tumbo, why don't you update his uh, Google Chrome? It looks like it's the, the yellow check mark there is requiring an update. But yellow check mark. Isn't that the the second option? What is that? What we got a yellow, little yeah, yellow marker there? No, that's a that's a plugin. You this? you mind your business, all right? You know what I mean? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're showing us all your secrets. What am I supposed to do? Not look and judge? <laughs> all right, go ahead. Let's talk about this stupid device. <laughs> yeah, it's so. You know what's cool? <laughs> Having two screens with uh, the division in the middle. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what you really want. I, I mean, to use this to watch a YouTube video. See how it looks. They're trying to go for multitaskers and business people yeah. and yada yada I yada. It. I'm amongst them. It's a fourteen hundred dollar phone. Pre-orders began last week. Um, also, is this a phone? This is huge, and it's a Microsoft phone. You know, like we remember how well, that turned out last well, time. Yeah, to be fair, they 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 figured it out by like integrating. Like this is Android. Yeah, it's not I mean, Windows OS. Right, Windows, which was terrible. God, I hated that. God, have you ever tiles. met anyone that that actually like liked the Windows OS? Yeah, and I stopped being their friend. You know, like I stopped talking. Okay, I'm being them. serious, and you're joking. No, I'm be, I'm being dead serious. I never talked to that person again. You know, no, I, gonna I can't. Trouble. He's gonna keep joking. I can't take him seriously. I, I can't <laughs> tolerate bullshit. I'm not memeing. Is he memeing? It, it's so small. It feels good in my hands. Oh, no. Kevin, that's wrong. That's reverse progress. I mean, I'll get a big old phone later, but I'm I'm gonna enjoy this little guy for a little while. I think. Yeah, it's a good phone. You know, what I mean, that case is real thick. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think this is dumb. Like. Cause I just, I can't imagine that like nobody likes using a tactical, like, you know, like a fake keyboard on a screen. So how many people are going to use this as like a laptop kind of setup? Can you even do that? I mean, not a laptop kind of setup, but yeah, you can like, you can, it's a meant for multitasking and, uh, it's, it's launching right on, uh, like peak iPhone, like prime time mm-hmm. too. Which is very interesting that they're trying to go up against that with their first phone back, you know, in, in the first phone in the phone business back uh, since their last disaster. Like, I feel like this is such a specialty phone where it's like, who is this phone for? Like, I feel like all the people that want folding phones are going to buy the fold. Well, this it's is $1,400. 
So you bump the, your also, price up a little bit and you get a much cooler phone with a front display. Phone. Because if you if you know uh, when this closes, it's just it's just like back of phones. But like, it closes. Does it close either way? Yeah, you. It, it's a 360 hinge, so you can close it like to where it's like I guess phone, two phone sides. Yeah, that's well, there dumb. you go. Um, that's your opinion. No, that's not good because then your back's a screen. Who wants that? Everyone. No, that nobody. Picture, you'd be like, that's great. No, not. You good. know what I mean? Um. So yeah. So for those of you who are interested, that is, uh, you can pre-order that now. I I really don't understand what they're doing with this. I mean, I think they could have just spent uh, like h- held it for a couple of years and actually done a foldable screen, but. You know, Microsoft, they don't really uh, think things through too much in the phone division. I mean, they were one of the biggest companies. Yeah, but, you know, they remember, Apple, let's like go Jeff back to the Neal. Windows phone. You know what I mean? Sure. Nothing infuriated me more than those fucking tiles. Can you, can you imagine, like, being in the pitch meeting and it's like, and we're going to make everything tiles. <laughs> hey, and guys. someone was like, okay, I can get behind that. I've seen tiles before. That makes sense. We use tiles for our computers. Same thing. Same kind of concept. You use folders for your computer. No, but like, remember when Windows 10 first came out? God, yeah. And it was and like, it was all fucking tiles. Everything is Windows, and everyone had to get a Windows shell. You know, the thing to like convert it back to like XP or uh, Vista yeah. like looking. It's fucking terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. Oh, man. Good times. Good times. Uh, Motorola teases smartphone event for September 9th. Oh, goody. Motorola has sent out teasers for its next uh, major smartphone, likely the 5G upgraded second version of its full foldable uh, Razer flagship, which the company will announce on September 9th and promises flip the smartphone experience once again. Remember when Google owned Motorola? Yeah, that was short-lived, huh? Yeah, it was not very long, but they made the Nexus 6, right? Maybe even the Nexus 5, 6P. That was that generation of phones. Yeah. I mean, Those Google, Google phones. was smart to at least be like, let's just fucking do it on our own because these fucks can't do it. You know? Well, I mean, they sold Motorola off. I guess they, it wasn't. I know, sold it off. And then they kept, and then they start, kept going with their own phone line. Yeah, with their own phone line, yeah. Uh, while there isn't a whole lot of information in the teaser, the short clip appears to show a side of a foldable phone, a uh, similar design to the twenty uh, to the twenty twenty razor being shut. Um, if that wasn't enough evidence, Motorola also appears to be using the same font as its razor invites from last year, which it teased a similar tagline of "You're going to flip." Uh, let's hope it's better spec. Uh, a lot of the rumors that it's a six point two inch screen, improved forty eight megapixel camera, which was a big complaint. Um, and eight gigabytes of internal RAM, two hundred fifty-six of storage, and a bigger battery. Cool. I mean, I to be honest, they missed the boat. If they would have perfected this one, I would have been really hyped on it. I thought it would have been really cool, and it really I feel just like came the, out. The way it opens is is less practical. Like I, I don't want a GS like you know a Game Boy Advance SP shaped phone. I get it because it, if people for the crazy people who like a smaller, more compact phone. Like in their pocket. Oh, please don't talk about us like that. All right, we're we're. Well, you're very talking shit right now crowd. too. This is even a more extreme <laughs> angle than than what you like. Uh, I I get who it's for, and I get again the people who like tech and like being on the cutting edge of things and having a uh, foldable phone. It's really cool. But man, they just missed it with the specs, and I don't trust them in terms of their screen. Like at least Samsung fixed their problem instead of just being like, oh, it's supposed to be like that. It's suppo- but here's not supposed did, to be fucked did up. Did we see a lot of people complaining about that after the fact? Yeah. I mean, that's where the big complaints because they're like, uh, a lot of people were like hitting up Razer being like, hey, there's like bubbles in my screen. And they're like, yeah, it's normal. It's not supposed to be. It's like, that's a good thing. It's airing itself out. <laughs> yeah, keeping it's, the system cool. It's, it's, it's part of the cooling uh, system. You move the bubbles around. Helps you cool all the internals. Uh, so, but Samsung, when they shit the bed, you know, they took back everything and they fixed the problem and then they released it which yeah that was scary when they were like okay hey we're taking everything back everyone chill out and it's like whoa you're taking it back from the people who are supposed to be demoing it that sounds crazy i mean i'm glad they did and they like what they added a thing like it was like hey this is meant to be here please don't unpeel it yeah and uh, it looks like that's removed from the new one too so i mean they're learning uh, no, and they added a, sorry, they added that memo on the ones that are already shipped, but the ones that they like took back 
it was um they they like made it to where you can't like peel it off like that yeah 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 so uh exciting again more uh phone stuff which again this is about that time of year when we're gonna start getting a lot of announcements um Mm -hmm. kevin we talk a lot about laser projectors right so what if Mm -hmm. i told you we do $4,000, $4,000, you get a short throw laser projector that goes up to 100 inches, and you get a um, a light bending projector screen with it. I would ask you what the best buy discount is. <laughs> That's a good point, too. But the Hisense is $4,000 laser projector, comes with a 100-inch screen. Uh, the L5 series, the ultra... Th- uh, ultra short throw projector which are the ones that you put like right up against the wall and it projects up so Um, cool yeah really awesome uh was originally a five thousand dollar price point when they announced it they're dropping it to four thousand and they're including a hundred inch screen with it um that's crazy it's gonna have a hundred inch screen that that does the ambient light reflection stuff right Correct. yes which is what you you need you really need it. I mean, you can do a yeah. basic one, but you're going to get a lot of washout. When you well, have that so, ambient light rejection, uh, you can have lights on and actually have it like. I was going to explain. I was going to explain. Basically, the screen itself has little tiny pockets that are kind of reflecting all the light except for the light that's hitting it from that downward angle. So they, they work with these down like upward shooting projectors. So cool. Awesome. Technology's crazy, dude. It's nuts. And- also, those are fucking expensive. Very expensive. Uh, now, yeah. in the article, it said that you can get one of those for like five hundred dollars. That's bullshit. You really can't. Like those are like easily uh, two thousand dollar like screens for like a good one. Uh, and so I don't know the quality of the a screen. Good one? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it doesn't actually say what the gain is, like how negative the gain is, and basically the gain is basically how much light it can actually reject. Um, and what's nice about the the those ones uh, for the short throw projectors is you can actually have lights in the back and it won't affect the picture. Whereas on like a tra- traditional projector screen that uh, rejects light, you can't have anything directly behind it because it can't tell the difference between regular light and projector light. So this one you can have your lights all around besides like shooting directly up which is cool uh but yeah so 2700 lumens 25 hours of view 25,000 hours of viewing 4k pixel shift uh hdr 10 hgl uh hold on um you got dolby vision dolby atmos android tv and google assistant built right in what's up kev 2700 lumens that doesn't sound like that much. Is that is that a lot compared to other? Because I feel like typically uh, projectors are not measuring lumens. They're, they're, aren't they usually shouting out nits? No, TVs, they're nits. Projectors are lumens. Uh, 27's actually pretty bright for a projector really? in that price range. What, um, is Tim's, what is Tim's brightness? Uh, I think he's at 4,000 something. Okay. But right. it's a much bigger throw that you're throwing. And of course. You, uh, with this projector, it being a laser, you're able to get much bright, like um, much more accurate in terms of the picture without yeah. kind of blowing out the picture. And sure. it, if you have that light eject- rejecting screen, I mean, you're pretty much you, that's solid. Twenty seven is like plenty. Sure. So, uh, good, good deal. I mean, that's exciting. Four thousand actually yeah, makes that, it a yeah, little bit enticing. Not bad. So, is this buying it directly from the manufacturer? Uh, I believe so, yes. I mean, I don't know if they're live yet on like places like Best Buy. Let me see. Kevin, fill time. Uh, Tim was originally going to get one of these sent to his house so that he could test it, but they I, stopped talking to us. I think that was so, LG. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, no, it was the high send one. I'm sure of it. So you shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> uh, no, there are, high, there are higher models you can get at Best Buy. You can't get this model at Best Buy. Yeah, I was really excited to see it in real life, but uh, I also don't think Best Buy has them set up, which is kind of lame. They just have the Sony ones set up. What's well, Hisense, like, you know? I mean, yeah, uh, what's wrong with that? Pretty good bang for your buck, but I mean, they're not gonna, they're gonna want to sell the $30,000 ones, I'm sure. Yeah, I guess, but I wonder how effective that is, you know what I mean? Man, yeah, $9,000. That's the one, but it's a higher model. Anyway, uh, so if you're looking for a good bank for your buck and a bigger screen, uh, I mean, a 77-inch OLED is, you know, 6000 so 
save two thousand, you can actually get a laser projector, which is pretty cool. Yeah, but like you know, for twenty seven thousand hours. Yeah, but you can change out that uh, that bulb. Yeah, but isn't that really expensive? What they always say, like the bulb's really expensive. Also, is it if it's a laser projector, does it use a bulb still? Yeah, but think about this: if your TV goes out, your TV goes out. If your projector bulb goes out, you can fix that. It's fixable. TV never goes out; they last forever. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You sound like you sound you sound like you're, you're good at selling TVs. I'm just saying, good sales. Worked the Best Buy. I I worked at Best Buy for a total of 20 minutes, and I sold a TV. So you tell me. <laughs> Who's got better record time than that? This is the best TV of your life, and it's never going to go out. It's going to last forever. Uh, speaking of TVs, TCLs, uh, I don't know if you've seen these, their new lineup, which is actually kind of exciting, especially for the price. Uh, Ooh, TCL's new TCL. 4K uh, uh, TVs offer mini LED tech and 120 hertz gaming for $650. That's a deal right there. The six series again. If you've actually seen, like I've seen these on display, it's pretty impressive. Like really, really impressive for an LED TV. I don't think I've seen something look that good on a picture that's not like super made to make the TV look good. Um, for an LED TV, uh, obviously it's not OLED, but I mean, if you're if you're looking for a budget TV, six hundred and fifty dollars, you get mini LED tech, one hundred and twenty hertz, four K, uh, Dolby or Dolby Vision HDR ten. Uh, it has a THX certified gaming mode, whatever that means. Basically, it's going to be a, a good for gaming in terms of the input latency. I mean, that's that's an important thing that like, well, I don't know, like I feel like LEDs have had that down for a while, right? Yes, but it's the lighting system that makes this different. Okay. So you get the QLED, so you get the the, the premium color filter, um, which again just get color corrected anyway. Um, and then you have the mini LED, which is that's what makes the big difference between like a edge lit LED, backlit LED, or OLED. Uh, this gets very very close to OLED from what I've seen, my experience, hands on. Uh, you it's very very little blooming you get very very deep blacks so it's pretty impressive again oled is still better but if you're looking for a budget tv this is great i mean like holy shit like that's a big difference in cost though you're talking about like a tv that's upwards to fifteen hundred dollars versus a six hundred dollar tv right yeah i mean let so the prices are pretty good the two, 2026 series starts at 649 for 55 inch 65 inch and 75 inch cost 899 and 13's 99 pretty damn Big good there with a with the 75 yeah i mean you're no going, you're going premium though yeah but 75 for, is fucking big look too. a 65 inch tv with pretty much everything you can ask for for 899 dollars that's pretty damn good. That's pretty good. Especially for the, the quality that you get from them. So uh, just keep your eyes out. They're actually sold out in a lot of places uh, right now. So you can't get... Do you think TCL is one of the ones that like you you saw the... Yeah. Like... That's, the, that's the, the gamble where the screen... Oh, that's something I feel like we should vocalize right yes, now. You know absolutely. What I mean? So uh, I did see uh, the last... The first six series from last year actually go completely yellow in brown. The brown like circle, right? Yeah, the no, it was like circle. the corners were like dark brown, and then it was yellow all around the screen. Mm, and then we turned cool. it off, and we turned it back on, and it was good. Really? Yeah, but that is a concerning issue. Yeah, no, absolutely. At any one, I, I, like it, it might slip some point back into. You ever see it go back? No, surprisingly, no. But I remember like looking at it and being like, "Well, these whites look really yellow," and then like a couple hours later, it was just like crazy. It's actually nuts. I've never seen that before in all my time. Never see it again. And I've never seen it again. Good point. Uh, Apple confirms cloud gaming services like xCloud and Stadia violate Apple apps, the Apple App Store guidelines. Uh, Kevin, with this story, I'm sure you know about it. A big kerfuffle right now with uh, Fortnite, with xCloud, with Stadia. Stadia already tried to get on the App Store. It's basically because all the in-game purchases and specifically to the cloud gaming services, Apple doesn't have, like, they don't have any way to vet the kind of games that are on there. Such bullshit. It's just about, like, hey, we're not going to get a cut of this deal that you guys have with the customer. We don't want you on our platform. Right? I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, that's 100% what it is. Like, Sony's like, or not Sony, I'm sorry. Uh, Apple's like, hey, 
you know, uh, the Game Pass or whatever it's called costs, I don't know. I have no idea how much Game Pass costs. Like $10 a month? Yeah. $50 a month, one of these? 50 I think it's $50 a month. Well, if you're going to use it on our platform, we get 30%, right? Like, that's the thing. Yeah. But it's a big, Microsoft's not going to do that, so... And it's kind of messed up, too, because they took away all the developing tools, too, so they can't even try to figure out, like, a way around it or, like, a way to well, fix that's it. that's for Fortnite, right? Fortnite uh, and uh, xCloud. Uh, they did that with xCloud, too, because they had a certain date to get it done by, but then right. they were like, oh, never mind. We're yeah. taking your tools away. Well, xCloud on... on uh ios was very limited right like less games than and then on android not good not a good start not what you want and then no no it's not a good start but at the same time like what are you supposed to do like stop production on this thing like it sucks for people with with ios but like that is like it's cool that uh what is the people that own fortnite are actually like going and fighting yeah, you so, know, like so, taking them to court. So we had Epic Games um, right after this happened. Epic Games then did a direct payment option on Fortnite on iOS. Very ballsy, where it was basically cheaper and it was like the pay directly. Um, no, and, did they do it on iOS or they did it on their own website? So no, like it was it you on, could go on the iOS app. Like you can see screenshots. But it was more expensive, right? The Apple one. But then right yeah. below that, there's the direct pay one. Where it was like, you can pay us and for like yeah. seven bucks. And then that yeah. got them pulled instantly. And then they opened a lawsuit against them. And then they got pulled from Google as well, which is interesting to me. Well, I mean, that it's seems like the fucking the wild thing. west. But the, 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 the big difference there is that you can, uh, I think it's called hot booting or something. It's, it's where you can install an app without it going through the, the Android app store. So right now you can you can download an APK file, which is the uh, the app files for Android. Put it into your computer, into your phone, right? It'll just Google Drive it and download it, and then you can click onto it and install it. It doesn't have to go through the Apple Store or through the uh, Android Store. Yeah, but that hurts them massively in terms of their market. In terms of no, but like, but that's the thing. Fortnite originally, when it came to um, mobile, it was not through the App Store. It was through widely like, hey, go to this website, download the APK, install it, and tell it that it's okay to install this file. Uh, so it's it's less of a big deal if it gets blocked there because like they can still develop for it and make these um, updates that matter so much for Fortnite. Um, the The difference with Apple is if it's not going through the proper channels, it's insanely difficult like you'd have to um what's it called uh when you when you install a custom firmware mm, I'm not entirely sure. something i know i know there's a way to do third-party apps on apple as well though it's not like but it's not easy yeah. like you have to install a custom firmware which is a process yes like a multi-step process that if you do it wrong it will break your phone it's it's not great. Uh, if they win this, do you think this will free up the X, X Cloud and Stadia coming to Apple? If they, if Apple I don't know. Wins? I mean, this is such a tricky one where it's like now, like the repercussions of this are pretty big. You know what I mean? Yeah. So right now, Epic, right? Epic owns Fortnite. Yeah, correct. They have been taken off the store, but also they they also unroll. Uh, uh, they also own Unreal Engine, right? That's right. Correct. And a bunch of like Unreal Engine is used to make games for iOS. I don't think so, they do that. I don't think they'd pull. I think I know where you're going with this. Like pull support. No, they've already pulled it. They How? can't work on like it, it's good now. It's not until like there's a round of updates that breaks shit, and like then they're not allowed to make new apps for it because they've they've pulled all developer shit for all of their company that's interesting because epic is very developer friendly in terms of being able to like uh when they started the epic store right i mean they gave them a bigger cut than steam gave them right and i mean sure that's developer friendly but that's also smart in the sense that they know they have one of the biggest games they have one of the probably the biggest 
engine, like game engine that people use. You know what I mean? So it's it's kind of like, hey, stop using that already established uh, store that you like, and here's a bunch of perks on why we'll do it. You you know you'll use us instead. So it's one of those things. Like, are they super nice and friendly, or are they just smart? Yeah. Like, do they know I mean, how they to take to advantage give of the fact of that, like, as much of a cut that they did? Like, they didn't have to give developers as much as of a cut that they did on the Epic Store. But they did if they wanted to make a a, a real solid reason to get people off um, Steam I, I and onto point. Epic Store, right? Yeah. I, and that, like, that's the thing. Like, it it hasn't worked fully, but it certainly. There, like, clearly, a bunch of games are released on on uh, the Epic Store that aren't no longer being released on Steam because they get more of a cut. Apple's going to have to break because as soon as the like shit starts breaking for all these games, they're going to be fucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's it's it, it's interesting cuz I I mean uh, obviously neither of us are lawyers, so it's it's you know one of no, those things where it's like we're kind of talking out of our ass, but at the same time it it doesn't look great for Apple cuz Apple now for reals is putting them in a position where it's like uh Epic can really be like, "Hey, we can no longer produce this because they are like, they've totally restricted us. They have a monopoly on iOS, which is like kind of specific. And I'm sure the argument we made well, that, that like, well, they can still put their game out on Android, but it's very interesting to see. Like, I, I wonder how this looks, uh, you know, going forward legally. It seems like, like- I think that's, the most interesting place, like where the all, the, all these lawsuits are going to end. It seems like you got a good head on your shoulders. I think Epic needs to give uh, Big Kev Dog uh, a call, get him in that courtroom. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, I mean, I'm, I studied bird law, so I don't know. Uh, you think they'll win this? You think Epic will win this, or you think Apple will be able to? I, I mean, I think a lot of people have talked about the uh, Epics. Uh, they put their briefing out and. It very much seems like it's skewed for uh, like layman to read it and kind of be like get all worked up and like the way it's written is about like motivating the public and obviously they've moved in an intelligent way that like I mean they 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 did all of this and immediately put out a YouTube video and a video in the game where it was like yeah. you're talking shit about Apple basically yeah. and like that's cool and everything but at the same time that means they motivated a young crowd that like. That's such a like skeezy little move. It's impressive. I I hope I hope this works out, but I also wouldn't be surprised if like just one day they like, oh hey, uh, we're back on there. Everything was figured out. Don't worry about it. And then they that. they like you know made a private deal or something. Uh, well, be ready for all these Fortnite kids to march in the streets and go burn down Apple. <laughs> That's gonna be the next move from the, the from Epic stoking the flame. It's so close to us. <laughs> I know. Uh, last piece of news: Lyft will temporarily temporarily shut down in California uh, and Uber for that f- uh, matter. If forced to reclassify drivers like Uber, uh, Lyft ha- says it may temporarily sur- uh, suspend service in California if it is required to classify drivers uh, as employees rather than independent contractors. Lyft president Josh Zimmerman broke down the uh, broke the news and an earnings call with investors yesterday. Early earlier this week, court California court issued an injunction which would force lyft and uber to reclassify their workers california is accusing the companies of not abiding assembly bill five uh ab5 uh which went into effect january 1st 2020 listen uber both said they'd appeal this week uh, week's injunction which has been uh has been stayed until August 20th. If the court upholds the injunction, the rideshare companies say they will have no choice but to temper, but to temporarily suspend service. You know, Here's another you game. know much about Here's this. Another. What was that? You know much about this? Uh, keeping up I, I mean, it was a big deal when that law passed in the beginning of the year, right? It was like, oh shit, they're going to have to be classified as actual employees. That's there's a lot of positive sides to that, right? There's a lot of positive sides for the workers, yes, uh, for yeah. like the the drivers. Um, but I, that also, being said, it the is kind of fucked. gig work, though. 
Huh? It is kind of gig work though. So I do, I can see how some drivers may not want to be like full-time employees because a lot of these people are kind of doing it like on the side or just to make money like on the side. Yeah, but I feel like more their job. of them are doing it in a way where they're, they're working for like 12 hours a day. You know, some of them. Yeah. More and more, especially right now during this, this pandy, you know, I, mean? I, I no, I feel like, I mean, I'd love for there to be numbers about this, but like, I have a feeling the numbers of people doing that probably have gone down because the, the amount of people actually using these services has gone down. I would imagine with um, the way everything is right now. Right. Yeah, I'm sure like, right, yeah, right now, but I'm sure there's a lot of people mm-hmm. picking it up as well. Like that, you know, you usually think so? would work. Yeah. Oh, they, they need jobs? Yeah, I mean, I st- I Ubered the other day, you know? and like Okay, uh, but like eight months ago, did you Uber more or less? I Ubered from the airport like a couple months ago. No, but I'm saying eight months ago, did you Uber less or more mm, than you do now? Less. Because I have okay, a car, well, but I'm saying when I need it, I use it. Yeah. So there, there is sure, a time sure, sure, sure. where it's like, but I, I do feel like most people I know in, in my circle are Ubering sig- or, you know, are, are using these rideshare apps significantly less. Hey, I'm just saying all of this is interesting where it's like, obviously this is going to hurt the companies involved because they're suddenly going to have to pay f- uh, an absurd amount of benefits. And like the cost just went up exponentially. Well, and so this is gonna, they're going to have to do schedules for these people as well. Like, like it's going to be, if it's going to be full time, they have to work a certain amount of hours a week. You know, they don't have as much freedom to be able to well, be like, thing. Hey, it, it, no, nobody's saying it's going to be full time. They're just going to be employees. Right. Cause yeah, right. Is yeah, that, that's a good point. So I, I don't know exactly how it works, whether like, Cause like if you work more than 40 hours, then you're a full-time employee. Right. So like, but Uber's always been up to you. So you can just choose to make yourself into a full-time employee. That is a weird middle place. I mean, I think long story short, this is bad for the Uber drivers long-term or cause like, this is just going to make it. So they put more money into autonomous driving. Yeah, it's going to definitely speed that process up. Yeah, I mean, and like, I have a friend who was an Uber driver for a, a while. Um, and he was he was working something like 12 hours uh, a day. And, uh, you know, it was one of those things when, like, when they started talking about autonomous driving, I was like, does that freak you out at all? And he was like, nah, it's so far away. And it just, like... At some point, it's going to be not far away, and then all these people are not going to have jobs, and that's going to suck. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like. I think it's important for people to have benefits, but at the same time, what is this going to do to those jobs? Because like, I feel like now Uber, Lyft pulling out of California or pausing. Cal- How long does that last? How long is it financially viable for them to do that? Like California is a big state. You know, we got a lot of people. Well, a I, lot of people moving around. I also think near the end of this pandy, what's going to happen is if they're not there and everybody's going back to work, I think uh, people are going to really be pissed at Cal- Like people are going to really push for Uber to be back. I mean, remember when Houston or Austin got rid of them for a while? Like they wouldn't let them come. And then people were like, fuck this, like change this. Like now because like, we need them back here. Mm-hmm. Because it's mm-hmm. super convenient and super nice to have, um, mm-hmm. and then that ev- eventually got changed to where they can they can come and they can be inside of Austin. Uh, I think there's just such a high demand for this outside of the the, the pandemic that these think about it. Like I even the other day, it's like when I had to go to the the mechanic. It's like that's a whole fucking thing to do without your mechanic doesn't drive you home. Lyft or Uber? No, just order a taxi. Well, I had to get Wait, my car towed. Your mechanic right? doesn't drive you home. He's not. He doesn't get one of the other mechanics to drive you home. No. Every single time, a mechanic's like, "You want to ride?" What? Well, that's some San Francisco bullshit. If I've ever is heard. it? Yes, that's one hundred percent San Francisco bullshit. If I well, asked the mechanic to, to drive huh? me home, they'd punch me in the face. <laughs> First of all, my mechanic square in the face. I I've known him for like ten years at this point. Okay, then mm-hmm. I think that's a different situation. You know, Kevin. <laughs> Here's the thing, like they, they, I, I see them offer people home rides all the time. Home, Tumbo, you ever seen this? You, the mechanics offer you a ride? Um, 
Usually, my mechanics give me another car. I could see them what doing the that. Fuck? I could see them doing that. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, I, I've had... I, it's, you know, they'll drive you home in someone else's car, which has always yeah. kind of made me uncomfortable. Like, how many times are they driving people home in my car? Yeah, what if they get an accident? Accidents happen, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what insurance is for. I guess, but man, uh, yeah, no, I've never. Anyway, but yeah, without that, <laughs> that I'd, I'd be fucked. Or like, even when you're out drinking, you know, and all of a sudden you don't have uh, Lyft or Uber, taxi. Just drink and drive. Who the fuck takes a taxi? Well, that's what you go to taxi. They're dead. No They've already Lyft. killed them. I was joking, by the way. Don't drink and drive. They're already dead. No, taxis are still a thing. So how am I gonna get my car home? You know what car? No, he said, don't drink and drive. But I said, how am I going to get my car home, though? <laughs> I get it, though. That's always the thought, you know? Um, no, so, I mean, that that's, I don't know. I, it, this is a fucking mess. And I, it's a disaster. I don't know what is the right answer is. But also, I think before they go out of business, because California is probably a lot of their profits, um, because you have such big cities, you know? Uh, and especially in San Francisco, that's like ingrained in the culture. Like, I think it's, it's about the people. We got a lot of people. It's not so much the city. Well, that too. But the, yeah. the San Francisco's culture is like, uh, like that's where it started. Like Uber and oh Lyft. yeah, those like, fuckers. Everyone's Uber and everywhere. It's yeah. disgusting. But a lot less now though. Yeah, the pandy. Yep, pandy slowing everyone down. But I don't know. I'm excited. I, I hope. I don't know. I don't know the right answer. I, I'm interested to see what comes with this. Uh, I want them to strike. I want to see what that looks like. Not strike, but I want them to shut down. Like, I know. No, but like, see, I say that because I think that like that would really motivate people. But like the people that work these jobs, the, the people that are, are doing the driving, Fuck. like, I don't want them to like be out of a job for X amount of time. Like, that's terrible. Yeah. Well, and then apparently they're, we're voting on it in California here coming up. So. I doubt you're going to vote on it. We'll see. You know what I mean? I don't have yeah. to. I'm telling you right now, he's not going to vote. Tumbo, he's not going to vote on it. He doesn't even vote. Which, what, so what's, the, what's the assembly number? Uh, Prop Five. 22. Oh, see, I was way off. Anyway, this has been Tech Fever, uh, the tech podcast here. I play everything. If you have any questions, send it into uh, techfeverpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for joining Remember. me. Thank- Send it to us now, and we'll answer them. Well, every single one of them. Yeah, I mean, if whatever you, you got. Like we'll the show, there. subscribe to the channel. Please, God, subscribe, and please leave a review on Podcast Services. We're on Spotify. We are on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, Kevin, they could follow you at Kind of Funny Kevin over on the Twitters, and you, they can watch your show over on YouTube.com for slash Kind of Funny. Screencast, you can check, check that out every Thursday. Right? It was it was today and I wasn't on it. All right, Wednesdays. <laughs> Wednesdays and sometimes Kevin's not on it. Actually a lot of times Kevin's not on it. Time. This is the first time ever I've been on it. So thanks for keeping up with the content. You piece that's, of shit. that's not true. There's been a couple <laughs> times you have been on it. No, I don't, I don't I think I've been every, on every single one. I don't think you know your stuff. Uh and uh you can follow me at Cheeks underscore Junior on Twitter to keep up with uh, the show postings and if there's any delays or if Kevin bails or whatever. Uh what's that supposed to mean? Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Tombo. Until (laughs) next time. I got it.